Charter Local Edition with your host, John McDonald. Welcome. I'm visiting today with John Ingen, who's the mayor of Missoula, Montana, my hometown. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you, John. Thanks for acknowledging Missoula as your hometown. Absolutely. Appreciate it. So uh, I wanted to visit with you a little bit and talk about some of the economic development uh, initiatives and things that are going on in Missoula. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate that. So we've had um, a bit of a building boom in Missoula, you know, post-recession. Um, it's really remarkable. I've lived in Missoula all my life. Um, and what we're seeing today is, um, is a lot of, I think, policy and practice uh, sort of meet. Um, we've talked about taking advantage of um, infrastructure in the urban core. We've talked about our transportation systems. We've talked about um, roads. We've talked about wastewater. We've talked about water, which we may talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. as our conversation ensues today. Uh, but folks are taking advantage of what we have to offer in terms of the built environment. Um, so we've got a lot of multifamily development going on, which means we've got a lot of new places for people to live, which is critical in our community. Um, and we've got a lot of new, ta uh, new retail, um, new commercial. Um, that's good for someone who is in my business, which is uh, largely about tax base mm -hmm. um, and community development. So that stuff is all going um, really well. Um, and we're attracting folks who can work anywhere and choose to work in a place that's beautiful, that's interesting, um, and that's still a place. So this long-term vision of placemaking uh, is actually paying off. Right, and the community is growing quite rapidly too. Well, the community tends to grow. I mean, it feels rapid. It's, you know, it's one and a half, two, two percent a year, very manageable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we think that um, that's a growth rate that is largely acceptable to the community. Uh, too much growth too fast can right. create lots of problems. Um, we're, we're sort of city eddy and we yeah. like it that way. In the infrastructure arena, and you mentioned water, you uh, right. have been in the, for uh, quite a while now, in a uh, legal case involving your water <clears> system. <throat> Talk a little bit about where that's at now. Right, so, so we as the only municipality in the state of Montana that does not own its water system uh, of, of 129 cities and towns in Montana, we're the only one that doesn't mm -hmm. own its water system. We have uh, engaged in uh, a legal battle with uh, the Carlisle Group, which is a, a global um, investment entity um, for local control of the water system. We won uh, uh, the first phase of a multi-phase trial. Um, that is, we, we won the eminent domain portion of this case, which means um, we in effect have ownership. Um, now it's a question of what we'll pay for it. So we're moving into the we're moving into the valuation phase of that question, mm -hmm. and that'll happen in November. Um, we we continue to to believe that uh, we'll be in a position to to buy the system um, and operate it for a very long time in the best interests of the folks we serve. And what's the expected time frame on that? You said this will begin in November. How long do you think it'll be before it's fully resolved? Well, I if 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 I were in the business of uh, prognosticating prognosticating um, how long lawsuits would last, I could probably um, <laughs> retire uh, if I were successful. Um, it's really hard to know. Uh, we think this is a months long uh, question rather than a years long question. Mm -hmm. uh, next phase happens in uh, November. An appeal phase in front of a jury could happen in January. Okay. One of the things too in Missoula that's been happening is the city has looked at a lot of different ideas about economic development and a couple of things are going on there. One involves the Fort Missoula historical area, uh, trail systems and things like that. Talk a little bit about that initiative and what Missoula is doing when it comes to kind of that idea of how trails and uh, that type of thing can be used for economic development. So fundamentally what we've discovered is that parks, trails, recreational facilities, the natural environment, um, that stuff isn't just uh, a bell or a whistle or an amenity. That stuff is fundamental to a growing, strong, healthy community. And what we find is that entrepreneurs, that students, that business folks, that um, laborers, that big brains all want to live in places where those facilities exist, where they're growing, where they're, um, where they're uh, uh, improving and so we've made an investment as a community uh, most recently through a through a 38 million dollar bond um, in the case of Fort Missoula Regional Park to mm -hmm. create uh, roughly 300 acres of new 
recreational space. So we've got fabulous soccer fields. We've got we've got um, a rugby pitch. We've got uh, we've got places for people to play. play pickleball, which sounds extraordinarily dangerous to me and I won't participate in any way, but apparently people do. Um, uh, we've also, as part of that bond, we've got trails um, uh, to invest in throughout Missoula County. People love them. They are willing to not only uh, pay for them, but they're interested in expanding them, they're interested in maintaining them, and they are absolutely interested in using them. So again, it's this back to this notion of placemaking. You make an excellent place, you invest in an excellent place, and people will come there and want to do business there, want to live there, want to play there, want to make a life there. Right. Sounds like a, a unique approach that, uh, that Missoula is using. Well, we're often known for our unique approach. <laughs> Let me ask uh, one of the questions I've been asking folks. Uh, you're at the League of Cities and Towns meeting, and this is a real good opportunity to visit with your, um, your colleagues and kind of talk about the issues that are facing communities in Montana. Looking forward for the next year or two, what do you see as a, a key issue that uh, communities are going to have to focus on? So, so challenges are always scalable, so it matters not whether you're a small town or one of the larger cities in the state. Um, we're always facing challenges around revenue. How do we how do we pay for the for the uh, the the basic infrastructure that makes our existence possible mm -hmm. in cities and towns? Um, and and we have a we have a couple of fundamental methods today: um, property taxes um, and our entitlement share from the state. Um, and what the cities and towns will continue to face. Uh, is how do we figure out new sources of revenue? Um, there will be a there will be a point um, at which um, we're just not going to be able to, to rely on residential property taxes to ma to make this system work. Um, so we need to keep looking at those revenue challenges, and I think that's a lot of what the league is interested in right. is making sure that citizens. Um, the folks who live here day in and day out um, aren't paying the whole bill for uh, the many people who enjoy all that Montana has to offer. Right. Well, Mayor, I appreciate you taking a little time to uh, visit with us today. I've got a new Google search, pickleball. Haven't heard of that one before. We've been visiting with Make Mayor. Make sure you spell it right. Yeah. We've been visiting with Mayor John Engen of Missoula. Mayor, I appreciate you spending some My time. My pleasure, John. Thank you. Thank Good you. To see you. Good to see you. Take care. Charter Local Edition has been an exclusive presentation of Charter Communications, providing original programming.